June 17, 2014 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order. And our Fire Chief Scott Spencer is going to lead us in our invocation this morning. If you would remain standing after the invocation for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we just bow before you this morning, acknowledging that you're Lord of all. Lord, we ask that you uh, bless this meeting as our commissioners go about the business of our county. Lord, give them discernment, give them guidance, give them the knowledge they need to make the decisions that will be pleasing to you. Lord, we ask that uh, you help us all remember that you put us all here to serve others and let us do that in a way that will be pleasing to you also. We thank you for the many blessings you've given us. Continue to be with us, continue to bless this nation, continue to bless this state, and continue to bless this county. All these things we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <coughs> Chief, thank you for being with us this morning, the latest in our invocation, and good morning to each of you. We're glad that you're here this morning, glad that you're participating in your local government. We also welcome those who may be watching this live telecast on DCTV 23, our government access channel. Uh, Ms. Watson, we didn't have anyone to sign up for public comment? Okay. We'll jump right into the agenda. We have a presentation this morning. A presentation of a proclamation from the state recognizing Judge Peggy Walker for becoming president of the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges. And we're happy to have our state representative, Micah Gravely, here this morning, and he's going to present that uh, proclamation. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Members of the Commission Board, it's an honor to be here with you this morning. Everyone in attendance, thank you for attending today. Uh, it is indeed um, an honor for me to be here with you this morning uh, in recognition of not only an outstanding public servant, uh, but uh, someone who's become a very good friend. Uh, Judge Peggy Walker, uh, before I get to the, the resolution, I wanted to, to make an aside uh, and let you know something that happened when the snowstorms uh, that we experienced this past year uh, stopped a lot of us from leaving the state capitol uh, that didn't get out in time. Uh, I was actually uh, speaking with Judge Walker uh, earlier uh, that evening, and this will tell you a little bit of a testament to her character. She had actually said that uh, any one of the delegation members, Micah, who is unable to get home or, or get across I-20, let them know that my home is open and that they are, they're more than happy to stay here, and that was a very, very gracious uh, um, invitation and uh, thank you so much. I think it speaks to your character and uh, your concern for all of us, so thank you so much. This year I had the great privilege, uh, one of the highlights of public service is when you have an opportunity to recognize a remarkable citizen, someone who I believe has gone above and beyond not only in their community, but uh, in their profession, uh, in their specific area that they practice in or, or work in every day. So I was very honored uh, to submit House Resolution 2029, um, partnered with my colleague, Dusty Hightower from the 68th District, uh, who has just got in. Uh, he, if he wants to join me here at the podium, I'd be more than happy to, to start the presentation with him. How are you? I'll see you later. Good. It says a resolution congratulating Judge Peggy H. Walker upon her installation of President of the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges for 2014 and 15 and for other purposes. Whereas Judge Peggy H. Walker faithfully serves in a leadership role in Douglas County and in the great state of Georgia, in the Georgia House of Representatives takes this opportunity to congratulate her on her pending role with the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges. Whereas Judge Walker has served as president of the Council of Juvenile Court Judges for the state of Georgia and has continued to offer guidance as a member of the Georgia Commission on Family Violence, 
serving two years as the chair of the commission leading efforts to write a state plan to end <coughs> domestic violence, and whereas she was a member of the first class of the Georgia State University, Georgia State University's College of Law, where she graduated with honors and completed a fellowship at Emory University Barton Clinic on Child Policy and Law, and is also a zero to three Harris Mid-Career Fellow. And whereas Judge Walker gives of her time to teach law students, attorneys, caseworkers, case workers, judges, and other stakeholders on complex trauma, substance abuse, domestic violence, and resiliency in families and children. <clears throat> Whereas she has served as a member of the Board of Trustees for the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges from 2005 to present. And whereas it is abundantly fitting and proper that the outstanding accomplishments of this remarkable Georgian be appropriately recognized. Now therefore be it resolved by the House of Representatives that the members of this body acknowledge and applaud the efforts of Judge Peggy H. Walker as she is installed as, uh, as president of the National Council of Juvenile and Family Court Judges for 2014 and 15. Be it further resolved that the clerk of the House of Representatives is authorized and, di and directed to transmit an appropriate copy of this resolution to Judge Pe Peggy H. Walker, March 20th, 2014. Mr. Chairman, it is my great honor to submit this and present this before uh, her county board of commissioners a resolution honoring our juvenile court judge, Peggy Walker. <laughs> I'm sure Judge Walker would like to make a statement now. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, House of Representatives, and I also would like to thank the uh, commissioners for the support. I could not do this work without the support of our local government as well as our state government. These are very difficult times for our families. We do the best we can with the limited resources we have, and collaboration helps us do a better job with the resources we have. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask for a motion to make this proclamation a part of the uh, uh, record. So, so moved. Moved. Second. Second. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Would y'all come up and have a picture made with us, Judge? <laughs> Recognize uh, Representative Gravely one more time. Mr. Chairman, I know this was not uh, an agenda item, but I, I wanted to take this opportunity uh, to thank the entire 
Board of Commissioners uh, and those in our public safety committee or in our community, um, specifically one Mr. Greg Whitaker, who is our director, the 911 director, I believe he was here in the crowd as well. Uh, I, I had the great privilege of carrying House Bill 449, uh, submitted that bill uh, my first session and uh, knew that it would need some vetting and uh, we were able to get that through committee after five committee hearings. And then we had a very robust debate on the House floor this past session. Uh, but I, I just wanted to say thank you for the support, uh, Mr. Chairman, that you offered along the way, as well as my, my friends on the board. Uh, it was a united effort from the county and uh, all of the different agencies, departments, and offices in Douglas County to see that this bill, this legislative measure, uh, saw, it to, saw its way to the governor's desk. Uh, this year it did, and I'm uh, very proud uh, to have the support of my colleague here, uh, as well as the other members of my delegation uh, that I served with. Uh, this was a bipartisan effort, and uh, I think it was an appropriate effort for our community. And so I wanted to present uh, a certified copy of the bill, uh, Mr. Chairman, to you. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank, thank you so much. And also, if I may, Commissioner, um, have a, I've got a certified copy for Mr. Greg Whitaker as well for his help on this. He actually came down and, and testified uh, in, in committee on several occasions and uh, was just a, uh, he did yeoman's work to make sure that I had the information that I needed uh, for this measure, that I was able to understand the protocol uh, within the 911 community, within the law enforcement community, mm -hmm. and just really worked with me on the details. And I think we have a very good bill, and I think it's a testament to this community that we were able to come out with such a good product. And uh, Greg, if you'd come down, I'd like to give you a certified copy of this bill as well. And I think Chief Greg, Spencer, if you would stay up here a minute, I, I'd like for the public to know what this bill means. Uh, all of us are, we know exactly what it meant, and we know that Greg's been fighting for this thing for a couple of years. You have as well, and we appreciate your efforts. But it's protecting, if you would explain a little bit, you or Greg, explain a little bit what this bill does. And also, if I could have uh, Mr. Milholland with our, um, Emergency Management and Chief oh, okay, Spencer great, great. Uh, got certified copies for them as well, and then they can just present as a. And if, Cap, if you'd like to come down, from the Sheriff's Office. <laughs> <laughs> I got one for you. Know <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, unexpected. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, um, the, uh, the House bill that uh, Representative Gravely is talking about, House Bill 449, uh, it came about from the floods of 2009, which we lost uh, seven people here in Douglas County. Um, as you remember, right during the middle of the floods, uh, we had a request from a news media organization, an outlet, that wanted in real time the 9 -1 audio recordings of these people uh, two of which uh, we know of that were on the phone with 911 dispatchers basically expiring while in their vehicles while on the phone with 911. And at the time, we thought that that was a very um, uh, bad thing to release. We, right. we didn't think it should go to the public, but the law said that we had to. Uh, we received support from the board, from our staff attorneys and the county offices uh, as well that uh, basically said this is wrong we shouldn't have to do it but the law says we do we went around and around at the end of the day though uh, as you will recall the, the amount that the media was uh, charged uh, with what the open records law says that we have the ability to charge them in the form of this use and this and that it turned out to be about 84 hours of one of my people actually two of my people going through the, the, the audio records to try to figure out what was relevant, what wasn't relevant at the time, what was HIPAA, what wasn't HIPAA, and it was going to take about 84 hours. At the end of the day, the, bi the, the bill that it was going to cost or the, or the estimate uh, cost to this news media outlet, they decided not to have it. 
so they didn't get it uh, at the time. The, the families that needed to listen to it, they were welcome. They, they got to listen to it. Uh, they, they needed this for closure. We, we worked with them well. And uh, this is where this bill came from. Um, it, uh, we, we, we tried it uh, earlier uh, with the Meredith Emerson situation that didn't go through uh, up in North Georgia, if you remember that. That was a similar situation, but with some photographs. Uh, when Representative Gravely uh, was, uh, I guess, uh, two years ago, when you, when you came into office, I met him at the uh, Walmart shop with the cop. We were actually waiting in line to get a child to go shop with. And uh, I just turned around and introduced myself, and I told him, I said, hey, we've got this bill we've been working on for a while. Uh, what do you think about it? He said, we got to do it. Let's do it. And, and it's been off to the races since then, and um, it's, it's something that needed to be done. Now what the, what the bill does is it basically says that you can't get these 911 audio tapes of, in real time of people that are basically dying on the phone with the 911 dispatcher. Uh, we, we met with other civil, civil liberties groups and uh, the open records people and the First Amendment people, and we, told, we, we basically had to share the check and balance it. All that's still in place. The investigators still get it. There's still uh, a right to attorneys to get into it, look at it. We're not trying to say you can't have it. There's just certain things that you don't need, and people dying on the phone talking to one seems to be one of those things, unless you've got the need for it, which the people that have the need for it still get it. So that, that's a little bit, I'll probably run on longer than you wanted to know. You probably know more about it than you ever <laughs> no, needed that's, to know. Uh, that's what I wanted the public to know. You know, we believe in transparency and open right. records as well as, as anybody. Uh, and I think in this legislation, and correct me if I'm not right, uh, Representative, that uh, the family still can really, if, if the media asks the family to release this information, the family agrees it can still be released. Is that yes, correct? Sir. That is correct. Okay. Yes. But uh, we feel as, as you, as you do, that this kind of information shouldn't be as someone is in their last minutes of their life of putting this across the local media on the, uh, So uh, I think it's good, good legislation myself. I'd like for all of you to come up and let's have a picture made with us. Uh, I think this is a, a good day for Douglas County, a good day for the state of Georgia to have this law passed. And thank you, sir. <clears throat> Okay, you have the minutes of the commission meeting of June 3rd, 2014, the work session minute meetings of June 2nd, 2014, and the executive session summary of June 2nd, 2014. Is there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made to these minutes? None. Being none, they stand approved as presented. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, the board to amend the uh, agenda to include an, include an item that has been brought to us that needs to be approved by July 1st, and it's the authorization to accept a grant in the amount of $117,241 for the Douglas County Felony Drug Court from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, authorize the chairman to sign all related documents, amend the budget subject to legal review. Do I have a motion to add that to the agenda? Mr. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Now I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Under tab four, we begin our consent agenda. Uh, authorization to accept the family connection grant in the amount of $45,000 
renewal of contract for Amanda Bryant, the Family Connection Coordinator, and amend the budget. Under tab five, authorization to accept an award in the amount of $3,800 from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for the technology upgrades for the Family Drug Court, which must be utilized by June 30th, 2014. Under tab six, authorization to accept funds from the Sheriff's Office asset forfeiture account in the amount of $8,328.36 for training expenses. Tab seven, authorization to approve an MOU with the Douglasville Douglas County WSA to allow the Sheriff's Office to utilize space on their tower for the radio enhancement project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Under tab eight, authorization to increase the county's contribution to the teacher's retirement for cooperative extension employees and expend an additional $315 for this increase this year. Tab nine, approval of the updated 2014 disadvantaged business enterprise policy. Tab 10, approval of claim for a property tax credit for a Douglasville country store. Tab 11, Authorization for Chairman to execute renewal agreement with LexisNexis. Tab 12, authorization to approve an amendment in the amount of $44,775 to the 2014 Aging Services contract with the Atlanta Regional Commission, amend the budget, and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents. Tab 13, authorization to execute an additional services agreement with New World Systems for the provision of the Logos Net Human Resources Next Generation Support Services at a total cost of $14,250, authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Tab 14, authorization to enter into a purchase agreement with Point Security Inc. for the purchase of a new security x-ray inspection system for the security station located on the second floor of the Douglas County Courthouse for a total cost of $24,180 and amend the budget. Tab 15, authorization to award the bid for the repaving of the parking lot at fire station number six to Chumley's Paving and Grading Inc. for a total cost of $88,955 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 16, Appointment of Jeanette Peterson Payne to the Douglas County Library Board, effective July 1st, 2014. That concludes the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion second. Any discussion on any item on the consent agenda? Yes, sir. Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to bring the board's um, attention to number nine, specifically for the public. This is the item dealing with approval of the updated 2014 Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Policy. This is an annual process, well, um, a periodic process that we must go through to be compliant with um, federal programming dealing with um, Department of Transportation here in Georgia, as well as the FTA and FHA, Federal Highway Association, as well as the Federal Transportation Association. And specifically, there is a 10% set aside available, and disadvantage is defined as both minority and women, that's available. Uh, we um, have workshops that we make available to the public to learn how to do business with the government at a local level, how to take advantage of these various programs, to which uh, we had one a couple of weeks ago, or last week for that matter, based on time. And we want to encourage the public as we continue to have these conversations about opportunities as we continue to move into our millage conversations, as we continue to move into our budget cycles, and as we continue to talk about how do we get um, the burden off of basically homeowners and moving it over to the commercial side, those people who are taxable, who contribute to the tax digest, take advantage of these opportunities. Be aware that they exist. Policies are on the books from the state all the way down to the federal, I mean down to the local, all the way up to the federal level. But we must be mindful to do our part to take advantage of this. No further questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other comments regarding the consent agenda? All in favor of the motion to approve, say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. Motion carries. <coughs> Items 17 through 20 are approval of commissioner's expenses. Do we have a motion to approve? So, so moved. moved. Second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. 
motion carries. Have a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, first one being early voting for the primary runoff election will be held Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, from Monday, June 30th through Friday, July the 18th. Early voting will take place in the voter registration office here at the Douglas County Courthouse located on the first floor. And the primary runoff election is Tuesday, July the 22nd. All precincts will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I want to thank uh, those who attended my chat with the chairman last night at station number six on Riverside Parkway. We had a good crowd, some good uh, conversation. Uh, any other business? One thing before we do leave, I see uh, Senator Dugan has walked into the house and we're glad to recognize Senator Dugan. Thank you for being here, sir. Uh, any other business come before the board? Being none, the agenda be addressed. Uh, this meeting stands adjourned. Thank you all for being here this morning.